The importance of photography, particularly photojournalism, is somewhat overlooked for our current generation. While he was at the prime of his career, one of South Africa's renowned artists, Len Kumalo, captured significant moments in our history. Now, his legacy is being celebrated by the uh, Northwest University Gallery with an exhibition titled, The Damage Still Remains. For more on this, let's now chat to uh, you know, his co-curator, Ngule Kumalo and Tabeleng Masudubeng, who is also the co-curator. Ladies, a very good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. I'm going to start with you and a, wo a very warm welcome. Thank <laughs> you so morning. much for joining us. Welcome. <laughs> morning. How are you? All right. Before we get to the conversation, I want us to talk about you know, the legacy that's been uh, you know, earmarked by the legendary Glenn Kumalo. Um, yeah. <laughs> What happened is we decided to start a, a Len Kumalo Foundation because we saw the importance of these archival uh, photographs that he has. Yeah. And m main purpose was um, me being in a, an academic space. I felt that this work should be in the books, in the mm. literature, mm. into the curriculum because our history is so distorted. And these um, old, um, the veterans of uh, photojournalists are passing away, you know. Mm -hmm. So how do we capture this moment? How do we tell history? How do we preserve our history? And this is the main purpose of these photographs. It's like, let's tell the history from the main source yeah. while he's yeah. still alive. Because it's, the history kind of like gets distorted. The minute a person dies, while they're still alive, looking at the images, they can tell mm -hmm. the story mm -hmm. and they can tell you who is this, what was happening during that era, during that time. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. is the importance of this um, Kumalo Foundation. But not only focusing on Len Kumalo, all the photojournalists of that oh, yes. time, because it's, it's very significant, you know, um, the more we put up their works and what they're doing, it, the more people talk and people engage with that as well. And more especially because each journalist played a different yes. role in whatever way. Yes. Now, uh, Ntabeling, let's talk about some of these key moments in history that uh, Len Kumalo captured. Um, so some of these moments that we have exhibited in the show, um, we have, you know, the Golden Miles Boudou marching with his prison inmates. Yeah. Um, and and some of them are some of them are personal histories you know mm -hmm. um it's it's not it's not famous icons um but it's it's personal histories which also matter within the greater context of the narrative of um the history of south africa mm -hmm. um we have images of winnie mandela um at rally at a rally um, but also Winnie Mandela at her house at home. We, there, there are many, there are many um, moments which uh, Gadele Nkumalo has, has captured in his lifetime. Okay. Mm. All right. Now, let's talk about the damage still remains. What's the inspiration behind this exhibition? <laughs> Um, what happened is we were going through the archives, um, but um, the newspaper archives from the 70s mm -hmm. and um, the 80s, um, we were looking from the Verts um, archives, we were looking through the National Library archives, and as we were going through the newspapers, we were like, oh my word, what was happening then is still happening now, you know, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> the similarities, it was like, you could take it and do a comparative study right. with it and right. and what went through our heads like wow the damage is still here and but not only looking at that i think it also looks at what happens to those people who took those photographs at that mm -hmm. time because a lot of them if they're not deceased they're going through a lot of trauma um post trauma that they have to enhance and inquire and, and, and engage in in their daily lives um i, I don't know if it's everyone wants to add on. um yes it was it was in quite it was it was inspired by by that the research that we have been doing at the national library with the newspapers mm -hmm. um but also looking at some of the events that have showed up mm. recently right. in the newspapers that are still kind of conversations that are fresh and are still happening. Um, we have images also of, you know, the Chris Honey uh, funeral 
And, you know, I mean, and right now we're having conversations around his killer being released and, mm -hmm. you know, what that means. Um, we have images around the water crisis that was happening. Um, and, I mean, you know, water, we're, we're entering a water crisis right, in South right. Africa as we speak. So it was also inspired by the events that are happening in South Africa at the moment. You know, Tabeleng, I'm actually glad that you made that juxtaposition between uh, apartheid South Africa and post-apartheid South Africa. So uh, my next question perhaps would be, uh, do these pictures, do these photographs tell a singular story or is it different stories being told by these photographers? I think it's all of them. I think what when we look at how we go through the different other photographers in their archives, we find a lot as well similarities of their images. Then mm. you realize that, oh, no, it can necess not necessarily this image, Yaga Babu Pralen. Uh, you can get Ubabumbu Zeni Zulu, who was also there at the time, yes. but it's just a small angle. Or sometimes because okay. she's, um, she studied photography, she will say, oh no, I think they were using this type of camera. This one was using this kind. So it's those, def um, those comparison to see, okay, their stories are almost similar and the images are almost similar. It's just the angles that they're standing on. Um, uh, regarding but there's also those moments where you could tell who this person was they driving past and this incident happened oh, yes, um yes. where we found um there's a there's a, a a piece in the show of the necklacing and every all of us thought um it's because of the apartheid you know in bimbi and then mm. when Uba, Uba, we call him pralen when pralen tells the story he says no he was killed because he was a well-dressed man and uh, the spirit of jealousy and there was also gangsterism you know wow. and and what was also very important he says i relocated because of gangsterism as well so it's wow. things that we don't pay attention to we always think everything is about apartheid but as well i'm i'm one of the people that was living in the apartheid years mm. but what happened as well for me i didn't as much as yes we could tell will run but for me i was a child i was playing in the street enjoying life it only hits you when you grow older you grow what older. was happening that and things are facts. not normal yeah. and with her on a different era of upbringing mm. it's bringing that dialogue of saying and me as a researcher, as a, a curator, as a photographer, I'm seeing it in this angle because I've got lived experience, you know, she's mm -hmm. got experience coming from a different angle. So it, 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 we're creating that dialogue of conversation. Let's let the work speak. And once again, when people see the, the, the show, it's like, oh, I've got a picture like this in my own house, you know, um, yeah. I'd like to bring it up, you know, and see what you guys think of it. So right, people right. want to engage with that. You know, Ntabeling, as a photographer yourself, I mean, you studied photography. Uh, one interesting facet about uh, photography is the photojournalistic opportunism. That's what they call it. You know, uh, do you find that most of these photographers, they capture the moment uh, purely coincidentally or is it planned? Is it, uh, you know, pure luck that they capture a particular moment, a particular reflection of a certain emotion? Um, I, I think... I think it's not the same for everyone. I think okay. there are moments for photographers where you were just passing by. I mean, I once took a photo, I was just walking to school mm. and I had my camera in my hand. I saw something. Like action you hadn't and planned I, it. I hadn't planned it. I'm not even okay. a photojournalist myself, but I was there behind with the photojournalist photographing, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so there are moments like that, but there are also... But do you think it's, uh, it's pure luck that you capture a world-class picture where you haven't planned it? I don't think it's pure luck. Is it? um, it's not pure luck because to take a photo requires a lot of skill. You know, mm -hmm. um, you don't you don't just point the camera. You need to you need to frame it. You need to check composition. You need to. There's a lot of there's a lot of thinking that happens behind a photograph before you snap. Um, and th there's the a certain button. posture that you guys because you know, you guys are so interesting. <laughs> Yeah? Yes, so I, I would never, s I mean, yes, those instances can happen, but mm. for the most mm. part, I would not say it's pure luck. Yeah, and I believe that uh, this exhibition aims to bring attention, you know, the past influences, how the past influences our future. So in terms of highlighting that aspect, uh, you know, how much uh, in greater detail does it go in terms of highlighting it? 
I think it was also quite interesting that this exhibition is happening at the Northwest, you know, mm. which mm. is still very Afrikaans based institution because it's the main campus. Mm. So to a point where, um, yes, you get people who are appreciating the beauty of photography, but you also get where people are like, hmm, I'm not sure if I'm ready for this space, mm. you know. Mm. So I think it, 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 it forces people to look, to really look and for people to also engage and ask questions. For me, if you don't ask questions, that means you're still ignorant, you know, or you want to look the other way. Right. And life doesn't work like that. And also coming back to um, the documentary photography, it's also, for me, it's what stories are we telling now? Okay. Because looking at social media and what gets posted, I mean, we were at a, uh, one of the talks and they were talking about how this, um, People were putting um, the the truck, um, photographing that, and they were saying how um, unethical. And I'm thinking, but if they didn't, some of us would not know, you Absolutely know. Right, so right. it's it's almost like where do you draw the line? But true, for me, true. when you were um, a, a, a photojournalist at that time, you unfortunately. You had to tell the story and for me that story still needs to continue what stories are we telling okay. and what are we putting in our curriculum what is it how are we going to preserve right, we're the out history of time, unfortunately. Yes. please share the details of this exhibition and i do understand that uh, mm -hmm. it'll be traveling around the country right yes it will be please share the, the, those details um at the moment um <laughs> we engaging with Claire stop museum um and we're also looking at Mklabati at the old um the old market photo workshop. Okay. Yes, yes. Right. So it will definitely be the, the next coming shows. All right, ladies, and great currently yeah. it is at the Northwest yes. University okay. yes. at the Botanical Gardens. Yes. Great stuff. All right, ladies, great chatting to you. Thank, thank you so much you. for your time. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. That was Ankulego Kumalo. And uh, uh, when, with uh, Ntabileng, they've been speaking to us about their exhibition, The Damage Still Remains, that seeks to highlight Len Kumalo's legacy.